Hello and welcome back. This is module 7 and we're going to take a look at issue management. In OJS 3.3, most journals divide their content up into issues and most issues are a combination of volumes and numbers. Typically, a journal assigns a new volume each year and new numbers within that volume. Here's an example from Log Studies, which is an annual journal. This is another example from Nordic Studies in Education, which is a quarterly journal. And now here's an example from the Canadian Journal of Higher Education that does advanced publication. They will publish articles as soon as they're ready under advanced publication, and then once they have enough articles to form a new number, they will add that, as they have here on volume 51, number 2. It's really up to you to choose how to organize your volumes and numbers. To manage our issues, I'm going to go to our dashboard and then to the left navigation bar to click on the issues link. There is two tabs, future issues where we have none and back issues where we have none because we've got a brand new journal and any future issues you want to create that are ready for an article to be added to them can be created here. So we want to start with the future issues and we will create a new issue. To do this, we can click on the Create Issue button. First, we've got some options for identification. Let's just say Volume 1, Number 1, 2021. Now, if your journal doesn't use volumes or doesn't use numbers or want to use years, you can leave those blank. These aren't required fields. In some cases, you might want to give your issue a title. Maybe you do this for every number that you publish, or maybe it is for a special issue. If you choose not to display anything, here you can uncheck them. So if you don't use volume, uncheck it and leave this blank. If you don't use number, year, or title, uncheck them and leave it blank. If you wanted to give a description for your issue, you can do that here. Again, that could be the example of a special issue, where the issue is specifically about a certain topic. You can also add a cover image. Let's try and upload one here. Then we've got an option for an alternative URL path that you will see in the domain. I'm just going to keep it simple here and click on Save. And now you can see we have a future issue. In the next course, we'll look at how you can move submissions through the review process, the copy editing process, the production process, and assign them to an issue. One of the things that you're going to see a lot of in OJS is this little blue triangle. And don't overlook that, because when you click on it, it will give you additional options so we can edit. At this point, the table of contents shows up for a dead issue and, of course, there's nothing because we haven't added any articles yet. Issue data is what we just created, so if you ever wanted to make a change, you could do it here. We've also got the alternative text for the cover image, and it is very important to add something here, even if it's just... Cover image, volume one, number one, 2021. This is going to be useful for people who are using screen readers and other assistive devices who can see the image, but would be able to have the alt text read to them so they know what is here. The last tab here is issue galleys. If you have created a galley file, such as a PDF file for the entire issue and you wanted to link that to the table of contents, this is where you will upload it. We'll talk more about that in the next course. Preview will let us take a look at the new issue. Now we can see the cover image, description, and of course, no content. When the issue has some content and it is ready to publish, we can hit the publish issue button. Once the issue is published, that link will change to an unpublished button. And you can reverse back if you ever did mistakenly publish and realize you needed to make some changes. This is not permanent, and if you wanted to delete that issue before working with it, 
Here is the delete button. Once you do hit publish issue, this will move from the future issues and become a back issue. This is pretty much all there is to issue management. I hope you find this helpful and I'll see you again in the next video.